Go super aggressive. And I'll, I'll hit John you. Mayer and Ed Sheeran. Once again. Once again. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna react to obviously. Right. You're like, comp. first it was the fucking Spider-Man and now it's this. Yep, yep. Yep. John Mayer and Ed Sheeran ruined the watch world again. Unbelievable. Yeah, relax. It's just watches. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> What is up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. My name is Michael. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on our friends at Squarespace later. Years. Buddy, it's good to have you back. I think that everyone's warming to our buddy Sam, but it's yeah. always oh, good yeah. to be next to you. Yes, thank um, you. When I touch your clothes, you don't get freaked out. I touch Sam's clothes, he gets very nervous. No, yeah. I, today, I <laughs> said he's wearing a barber, and I was like, whoa, that's a pretty sweet barber. That's not a bedail. And he goes, it's a barber. Oh, <laughs> like, ah. Nice Submariner. It's a roller. <laughs> yeah. uh, today we're talking about a, a really, really great uh, and interesting subject, a subject that uh, used to be a really deep cut in the watch world. Yes. And now has become more mainstream, and in turn, uh, you can't get it anymore. Now the wait list was, it was 12 years, and now they're just not taking 12 orders. years. Well, it was six months, 20 months, and everybody was like, that's insane. I would never wait for a watch that long. And then John Mayer, Ed Sheeran, gave it a little shout, and it went to... 12 years. Yes. And closed. So we are talking, of course, about Kikuchi Nakagawa. Yes. And uh, and their three watch collection, uh, uh, all hand finished uh, in Japan uh, with Swiss movements, and uh, they've blown up the whole watch world. Which, wait a minute, let me do some quick math. They do eight watches a year. So eight times 12. <laughs> You're like, that's they're 96 poor. watches. <laughs> To me, in my head, I was like, oh, they got thousands of orders. Like, they're beyond capacity. No. They probably got 104. No, 96 rich guys were just like, <laughs> I'd like it. Yeah. It's $22,000. That's cheap. So, the real the real topic, real big discussion is what happens when a brand basically gets too popular and then almost kills itself because yes. all of a sudden, anyone that's interested is like, well, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to wait 12 years. And now I can't even buy one. And at that point, with this watch, it's so particularly made, it's not like you can just put out a listing and be like, watchmaker needed. You know what it makes way for? Baltic to make an $800 version. <laughs> and Baltic true. will go make a million dollars. That's our next topic. Baltic is just killing <laughs> That's what's going to happen, right? Yeah. Kikuchi Nakagawa built this entire business, huge like cultural influence to like, the style. $23,000 right? watch. This larger Paddock 96, essentially, and then Baltic just makes a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's it. Okay, so let's let's go back into history a little bit. Yes. Uh, the first person that I ever knew to post about these watches, and God bless him. I'll take man. one guess if you give me one hint. He's Asian. <laughs> you like new hint? <laughs> Eric Koo? Yes, that's right. <laughs> wow, yes. Can, yes. You could have said any other hint. You're that like would John not... Goldberger. You're like, no, he's Jewish. So Eric Koo, who's a very prominent uh, collector and all around really funny guy. I don't know him personally. We DM'd a couple of times, but his Instagram. Oh, dude, we're like best friends. No, we go way no, back. No. I don't know him personally. Know him super personally. funny. Super You're a funny. idiot. <laughs> I don't know. He's, I never. I we haven't talked, but like we know each I've other. I followed him in his year for a long time, and he's very very funny. <laughs> and and I think that because he has so much money, I think he's above a lot of the tit for tat. And everyone. This is the guy that's got... trying to be Eric Koo in many ways. Did he get angry about the? Custom Cartier? No, he's the one that beat Roni's Cartier, and then oh, Roni got Roni's upset. The one I got angry. He <laughs> so it's great. Like, okay, Eric's yeah, yeah. just the richer, just the richer troll, and he doesn't care because yeah. he, he, you know, that's it. What I've heard about do? his setup for when they go film something. It's like everybody else is walking in with like a camera holding it, and then he comes in with like fifteen Steven Spielberg level directors I bet behind it. him. I bet. I bet. So Eric, who posted a photo of of his. I it could have even been two uh, Kikuchi Nakagawa's years ago. Wow, so much so, and this is this is years before I was buying watches. Like I, I was I was in the watch business. I don't mean this. You still knew I mean, Eric was a funny guy on though. A per, <laughs> on a personal for personal collection, I had I had no budget at the time, so I uh, I just would never. I, I wasn't in the market for a twenty two thousand dollar watch, particularly. I, I wasn't in the market for twenty thousand dollar Paddock, and I certainly yeah. wasn't in the market for twenty two thousand dollar was essentially a no name brand. And when right? I first learned about this brand, I was an item. There you go. Yeah. But you still don't buy $22,000 watches. <laughs> well, okay. At least I know Eric Koo. <laughs> no. no, but my, my, my point is that at the, the, this is getting to a funny point. Yeah. I considered emailing them all, like, 
for a discount at the time. <laughs> okay. So I remember being like, 22000 is way too much money. Yeah, no way. I'll give you 11000 A little lesson in business here, guys. <laughs> and uh, I have no idea uh, what the wait list was at that time, or if there was one. I know that he had a special edition made with his, well, it's customized. It has his name on it. Long story short, right, the inspiration was clear. They were pulling from vintage paddock archives, uh, particularly the reference 96 um, and those proportions. Which I always said if the 96 was bigger, it'd be a perfect watch. And I actually love the 96 at 31 millimeters. I think it's amazing. Yeah, but but yeah. Kikuchi Nakagawa has remade and reimagined it at, at 38.6 millimeters uh, in diameter. So it's just, it's 38.6, right? I think, it's, I think it's 36. My mind's in Japanese. I think the numbers are still the same. 36. <laughs> <laughs> I think the number is this. <laughs> I think the numbers are in English. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god, my sides are from that one. Okay. Numbers are still in English. No, do they use English numbers in Japan? <laughs> like, okay. 36.8. 36.8 uh, millimeters in diameter, 22 millimeter lug width, which is a huge difference in proportion um, because the, the, the Pateks were, uh, they're 18 millimeters. They're um, tiny so watches, a 22 yeah. millimeter lug width is abnormally large. That's wider than a Rolex sports model, right? <laughs> so so it's pretty significant and it does change the presence, makes it more modern, makes it more substantial. But it also um, still looks, since they went in such a large lug width, the 36.8 still looks like it could be from this picture, a 31 millimeter case. It, it, right, it still does look right, it, which it, is part of like the oh, that's that's very aesthetically pleasing. This watch is a master of proportions. It's 8.5 millimeters uh, in thickness, including the sapphire, and again, it's 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 twenty three thousand um, dollars. Here are a couple of photos of vintage 96s, rather here wow. uh, in white uh, with the a white gold, gold. is insane. Fifty two thousand in two thousand eleven. Yeah, in two thousand eleven, imagine that this watch would be. I don't even know what this watch would be today. Yeah, um, well over a hundred thousand dollars, probably even greater than that. Right, some. People that are, if Eric Koo is watching this, he probably just laughed and I said $100,000. This watch could be $175,000. I have no idea. He no. laughed because he's a funny guy. Yeah. <laughs> I have no conception of what this watch is worth. This has an enamel dial and brigade oh, numerals. That is watch unbelievable. Is yeah. And then here's a black uh, 96. Again, white gold case, black, you know, dial. I mean, it's essentially a one for one. I mean, you yeah, know, or it's unbelievable. It's really I'm close with the Kikuchi Nakagawa. So they get a zero for originality. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, But yeah. that is not their game. There's right? no question. You look at this and you're like, that is like, you didn't even think of a design. No. You just copy paste it and then said, we'll do this part a little different. Exactly. Exactly. Which, frankly, is a hell of a lot more than you can say for a lot of brands reissuing their own models, right? Like yeah. the 50. 711, what does it do better than the 3700? I mean, it's got a better movement, I guess. It's an in-house movement, but that's not... I mean, Paddock hasn't improved on the Nautilus the same way that Kikuchi Nakagawa has improved on the 96, right? Oh, 100%. Which is where we're getting into the conversation, which is on a, on a technical level, their, their finishing method, which is which is specifically called black polishing, um, which is not something that they've invented, uh, but something that they've executed with Excuse me, with perfection, yes. um, a, a, an abnormally, uh, uh, it's an abnormal finishing because it, it's so difficult no one does it. Here's and an I'm example. take it over yes. a little bit. Yeah. This is a quote. What is absolutely insane with Kikuchi is the hand-done black polishing of the case and hands. Let me put it this way. Even Paddock only does this for some small movement components. These guys are doing the same at an even higher level of artisanship for an entire watch case and intricate large watch hands. So something that you do barely, you're like, wow, look at that and admire it. Yeah. They're doing for the entire case. That is the essence essence of the entire brand. Unbelievable. The movement, it's, it's not a handmade movement, or it's not made by them, I should right. say. It's not in-house or anything like that. They are specifically saying, no, look at this polishing. Exactly. And from a certain angle, black polishing makes the steel look actually black. This is These are, these are steel? Yeah. Oh, I think oh so. Oh, my it's, God. Uh, <laughs> You're kidding me. Oh. New video, because I don't care anymore. The, the one thing, obviously, here uh, is that they are steel. So when you're doing a, a comparison with their with other famous, right, uh, uh, high end watchmaking time only pieces, uh, like from Langa and from Patek, which aren't twenty three thousand. I mean, the Langa Saxony, I think, is like twenty three nine or something like that, and the Patek Calatrava is is you know, closer to thirty. Um, but these watches aren't precious metal, so there's a difference there, right? This yeah, is, yeah. This is certainly finished better on the case. There's no question. This um, is. 
it. And, and steel, I think, specifically, is just so they can polish it this way. Right. Uh, that's right. The, I don't want to say it's the only reason they're using steel. I don't know why. But that is the whole essence of the brand, so you right. kind of have to at a right. certain point. Right. But if you look in these photos, I mean, it really does go pure black. I mean, I oh, think in yeah. some photos it goes pure white, but black is really how crazy. I mean, look at that. I mean, what a great no, illustration of the color. And the hands... Absolutely spot on. I'm right. sick of seeing tiny stick hands on all these dress I watches. Know. I want to see something Which like actually that. brings me to another point about this brand is actually when you explore the collection, yep. I'm rather underwhelmed by uh, by one of their newest models here. Oh, um, yeah. I think the it's that pretty Ishi mediocre. Monge? Yeah, I don't like it at all. No, Well, they change uh, the hands, I'd, I'd be all about it. Yeah, yeah well, even then. I, yeah, maybe. I, I just love the stylized uh, Breguet Arabic numeral. Um, here's a photo of what it looks like on the wrist, about a 6.5 inch wrist. Again, oh. it looks large. This watch yeah. wears large. It's large, you yeah. know? Know, uh, because a 36.8 millimeter watch may not be very large, right? Like a, it's going to be a little bit larger than a vintage Datejust. Um, but those 22 millimeter lugs are going to give really wide it's presence. A big strap. It's going to be like a bracelet, yeah. right? Uh, very similar trick of proportion to the uh, Bulgari Octofinissimo. Yeah. Right. I mean, a watch that is not that large, but because the bracelet is so wide, it's always going to wear larger. Yeah. You know. I think that when they inevitably release the Bulgari Octofinissimo in 38 millimeters, mm -hmm. I think it'll still it'll wear like a true. 40 plus, right? Yeah. Just because the bracelet yeah. is still going to be really large. You know? I will say, seeing it on the wrist, I'd rather go smaller. If you could do 34, 32, I'd stick with it. Which For is what? Just the 96. Yeah. With the. With the, the, the Kikuchi? Kikuchi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I actually kind of agree. This is large. This Seeing should be big on your wrist and big uh, on my wrist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't look how I'm picturing it to look right now because I think I am picturing maybe 34 with a smaller strap. Right. 32. Like the 96, I would like a tiny bit bigger. But if you hit this 36 and gave it to me, I'd be like, nah, it's, it's, too, it's too much. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Isn't that right, Mr. Domain? Yes, it is. I wouldn't be here uh, if it hadn't been for Squarespace. When I started my business, Theo and Harris, about nine years ago, I didn't have uh, the ability to make my own website, certainly, and I didn't have the budget uh, needed to pay a fancy uh, you know, web designer to, to, to design and to run it. Yeah. Right? I needed a, a, an entrepreneur-friendly right, uh, 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 builder that could enable me to design a beautiful website that was functional, a website that I could trust to help me run my business. Uh, and Squarespace was exactly that partner. Their templates were just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wanted to find the one that was perfectly on brand for what I had imagined, and I did. Mm -hmm. um, but God, there were so many that I could have gone with that were just equally equally beautiful, right? And functional. God knows. I mean, I went on to literally build this business, and it's nine years later, and we've accepted you know millions of dollars in, in, in payments, uh, and with, with really without billions, billions <laughs> you know, without, uh, without problem ever, right? Squarespace yeah. is just been the most incredible partner. I couldn't recommend them enough. Not only if you're a you know new entrepreneur starting a website, but if you already have a website, uh, I think you should go on to Squarespace. St strongly suggest and just explore. Right, no commitment necessary. Just explore their options, explore their templates, and I think you're going to find um, that there are better options out there for you than what you've currently got going. And it's and Squarespace is the answer. It's a one stop shop. And Squarespace makes it easier than ever, even from when you started with the yep. Fluid Engine, so you can drag and drop text, you can schedule blog posts, and if you ever want an actual physical retail location, you can do a point of sale system that is already connected with Squarespace. Couldn't possibly recommend Squarespace enough. No, you can go to squarespace.com slash Theo Harris to save 10% off your first order of a website or domain. Boom. So, so, okay, so let's move on a little bit to the next portion of the conversation. Now, we've already talked about what these watches are, their lack of originality, their their expertise in finishing, uh, and, and what black polishing is. So now let's move on to this John Mayer, uh, uh, Ed Sheeran conversation. Okay. Yeah, I'm also really excited at the end to talk about the Grand Seiko comparison. Yes. I think that's a big thing. Exactly. I totally agree with you. So, so a couple of months ago on a Talking Watches that John Mayer hosted on Hodinkee, uh, where Ed Sheeran was the guest, they discussed... This micro brand they both have a passion for, Kikuchi Nakagawa, and 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 it put the brand on. Right, the brand has existed for many years, or, or quite a few yep. years. I, I, the brand had existed for many years, or quite a few years, uh, and now they were getting you know front page right, almost a hundred orders. <laughs> you know, exactly, we get front page advertisement on on what is essentially right the most prominent publication in, in the watch world, right. Binky, um, hosted by John Mayer, and and. Uh, no one else on any. No one else could have done for Kikuchi what John Mayer and Ed Sheeran were able to do for them. Period. Exactly. I mean, there, exactly. You know, no one. No, there isn't a writer at Hodinkee. There isn't a. There isn't a watch influencer that could have done for this brand what they were able to do in two seconds. Exactly. Yep. I also think it helps quite a bit naturally that these watches are twenty three thousand dollars. Yeah. 
They're not that much money in the grand scheme of watches, right? And which sounds crazy. Yeah, of course. But when John Mayer and Ed Sheeran are talking about like giving their endorsement for things, a lot of the time these watches are ungettable and unaffordable. Yeah. Right? I mean, they're, to to everyone, to, to, they're hundred thousand plus, right? To the level the, of the, even if you have the money to spend on the watch, you still can't get the watch because sp- you have to buy it out the store in jewelry. Exactly. First. Yeah. The Spider Man is is you know is half a million dollars. Yeah. I'm assuming you can't get. That's it. not real. Not that many people are going to go out and run up and get a Spider Man because John Mayer said it was good. Right. 23,000, a lot of guys in the watch world can can swing it and I they mean, do it all the time, right? I look at it too and I was just like, wow, that, you know, that is a beautiful watch you got on there. I know. Yeah. You know, so so that's really what happened to explode, to explode the brand. There was already a, a wait list. Yep. There's a wait list going back at least two years, um, but it was a shorter wait list, you know, six months, a year, year and a half, and then it immediately jumped up to 12 years and then no more orders at all. The shutting down of orders, well, to you, what is the bigger detractor? I know they're both huge, but the shutting down of orders or the 12 years? Well... I don't know. I mean, in you terms know, of for I'm me, honestly, it's stainless steel. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. kidding. I don't know. I mean, I kind of think it's poetic that they're just shutting it down. Yeah. It's, it's like, well, I'm learning, I have a couple of questions for you on production, on wait time, on sales, on pricing. Yeah, yeah. But I kind of like that they just like, no, guys, we're done. We're done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, they closed that. I don't know if they shut down for good, but they closed. Shut down, the, right, they closed down the orders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're not selling any more of these, at least not for... Quite a while. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting. So, so okay, it does bring up a couple of points. So, so on production, they're yeah. making eight watches a year. Should they make more? Should they invest in training another artisan? What do you think? I I personally would like them to. I don't mind a wait list, but a 12-year wait list is the point where, like, you not only have to find this incredibly niche market, but you have to have now an incredibly niche market that is like, okay, yeah, it's even more poetic that I have to wait 12 years. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll put the deposit down and wait 12 years and forget about it and get the call. Mm-hmm. Like, I could see I could see you doing that if, it, if this was gold or something like that. Mm-hmm. If it was $30,000 or whatever it may be, you'd be like, you know what? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, you know, I, I'm really interested to see where I'll be in 12 years yeah. when I get this call. Like, yeah. what will happen? Yeah. That is cool. I would like to see them lower it to five years, mm-hmm. but there is a level of it being poetic because my biggest question would be, if you trained someone else, one, that's going to cost a lot of money because this is just, this is a craft that it's not like you can go find a watchmaker. It's going to be incredibly difficult to find. Like mm-hmm. Grand Seiko, they have their micro artist studio, which we'll talk about. But that onto itself is such a niche market that when they're trying to figure out how to do polishing, they have to go to like Philippe Dufour. Right. There's, there's such a small amount of people that I'd be worried in long term, okay, if the hype goes down, does that hurt the brand now that you have too many people? You're not getting enough orders? Or right. does it stay at this level? What about the service department? Forget about movements. What about the cases? When a case oh, wears, case. no one else can essentially polish this watch. And no one else, well, even if someone can, they're probably not going to want to. Right. Who, who are you going to send it to? Who are you going to send it to? Yeah. That's a crazy thing, too. I mean, and then are you going to want to get running a company is hard? <laughs> you like, know, it's just like. Well, because think about this. Well, you said servicing. It's like, okay, I understand the case is finished to this incredible level. So I don't want to bring it down the street and have someone crack open the case back. You're going to scratch the finish. Right. So it has to go back to you. Right. So then, but well, then we're also we're talking on such a small scale that like to overwhelm a company. If it's 12 year wait time, I am assuming it's like 100 and something watches. Right. To overwhelm a company at that level is like, okay, you don't have the infrastructure really at all right now. Right. Like if you had one already, if Eric Koo wants to send his back in for something, right. what happens? He obviously would probably get special treatment. Right. Or whatever. But what happens? What because happens? Some people you said were getting huge delays on their orders already. Yeah. There was a guy on a forum that said that uh, his order was delayed 10 times. It's a lot of times. 10 times. 10 times. 10 well, times. Okay, they told you, hey, I, I told you it's not going to be. I told you June. It's not going to be June. Ten I told you September. Minutes. It's not going to be September. Like, like how many? It's, that's a, lot. That's, a lot. That's enough where you lose the poeticism. Like, if you did buy this watch and you were like, okay, 12 years, if you were now up to 18 years, are you going to yeah. be like, the fuck, man? Yeah, what's, what's going on? Yeah. Are you guys not done? Yeah, I would, if, if I'm signing up for a 12 year wait, I would expect essentially 12 years on the day. Oh, yeah. I want to watch Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I yeah. gave you 12 years and I was yeah. super cool about it. I gave you 12 years. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, obviously, life happens, you know. Uh, well, well it, it brings us into you know the next point. Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals. (laughs) 
on sales, sure. forty five percent deposit is required. Yep. That's ten thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Yep. What do you do with the money? Let's it's not let's say it's non refundable. Sure. What do you do with the money? That's what do you do with a non refundable ten thousand three hundred and fifty dollar deposit that you know you won't have to make the watch for another ten years? You call my friend. Anthony Ferrer. <laughs> yes, you do. You know? Wow. Well, because I would think my biggest panic if I was in that position would be like, okay, we have to make these watches for 12 years. I'm assuming they are working on them. I'd be like, that's not enough money to keep us going for that long without taking in something else that, that keeps all the, the train running. Yeah. This best case scenario for them doesn't really seem that good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not really... Like, your business doesn't seem that sustainable. No. No, nor that profitable. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. if the Swiss had this kind of success, for this would be a five hundred thousand dollars. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Interesting, because it's kind of tricky, right? Like, if I, I've never been in this position, so I can't even imagine it, right? Like, if if you take a deposit for a project that's due in ten years, and it's not just one, let's say it's fifty or thirty or whatever, so now you're sitting on this money. What do you do? Do you just hold it, which is probably the right thing to do. Again, if it's non-refundable, then you're not risking withdrawals like a Ponzi scheme, right? Which is you know, the Ponzi scheme, the whole idea is you get- And like, not that this is even rare. a scheme. No, 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 God, not, not yeah. legend that at all. I'm, I'm just, just saying, because you can accidentally find yourself in a, in a cash flow problem, right? That, that yeah, happens yeah. to people, right? Like I could see a world in which a company that took this many deposits has this bank account full of the money and then says, okay, n- I don't mean anything felonious of going out and spending it on other things. I just mean, oh yeah, Maybe we should spend it on training some more watchmakers, and maybe that that's positive investment, or maybe we should spend it on I don't know things like that, right? Yeah. Positive things. Yeah. But then that reserve does go down. Right. When you spend the money, the reserve goes down. So then, will the money be there in ten years? And you have to when open I up. now owe you a watch. I don't right. know. Again, this is a small scale operation, guys. Like they're talking about eight watches a year, right? I mean, do that. I mean, I mean, even if they're making. You know they're making ten thousand dollars a watch. You know how many watches was? I mean, eight. you know, I mean it's eighty thousand dollars a year for ten years. It takes ten years to make eight hundred thousand dollars. You know that's that's you there know have, there for, has to be for a one percent for a one percent or successful company. No company. So you're you're the following the one percent of companies that have received this much praise and success yeah. to make eight hundred thousand dollars is not a lot of money. Yeah, it's just not over yeah. ten years. By the way, yeah, I, yeah. even in one year, it's not a lot of money. Again, if you're falling into this position of you are in the top point one percent of attention. It reminds me, we went to we went to a conference a while ago, and this woman was talking about we we're like talking with her pretty candidly about how much she's making and stuff like that, and her business scaling and stuff yeah. like that. And she said how much she was making per month, and you and I were like, "Wow, that's amazing!" And then she told us about her employees, like their average everything. And then she left, and we were like, wait a minute, employees times monthly times. <laughs> it's like. You're making nothing. You're making no money. You're making $12,000 a year. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And again, we can't we can't really dive into yeah. their financials. I'm assuming their margin has to be higher or the other half of the money coming in, like they're assuming that could push them forward. Right. But it's at such a slow pace with such an such a niche hireable market. Yep. That's like, how are you, you going to pull this off? Are you, you going to open off? it up and be like, hey, in two years now, it's a 10-year wait list, so we're going to open it up for the 12 again because right. we need to keep growing. Right. Or do you just stay like this and get really stressed all the time? So let's say they do it perfectly, sure. which I, I don't even doubt they would because I, the, the sort of discipline that it takes to do this kind of product, uh, make this kind of product, probably means you're the kind of discipline in life, right? Sure. And I yeah, would yeah. imagine that they'll be just fine, right? So it's sold out for 12 years. So that means they are committed. They are committed and bound by their word, mm-hmm. right? Forget about contract. They're bound by their word and their honor to make watches for the next 12 years, right, for, for, the, for the people, right, for these people. If the money is non-refundable and more people want your watches, why not sell out for the next 20 years? Yeah. Why draw the line at 12? Is it because you don't know if you want to be doing this in 20 years, but you know you can commit to 12? And if you take deposits for the next 20 and then you break honor, then what? You get into a tight spot. 12 years is insane. I'm doing pre-orders for Jackets right now, and that's two months, and I'm panicking. 12 years? 12 years. Because even now, you don't know where you're going to be in 12 years. You, you know, know if you're interested in this in 12 years, and we just don't know where the company will be. Right. Like you essentially have to be like, okay, I got all this money, like so I need to now push that into the next stage of the company. Is the next stage of the company 
those watches that you already have on order? Right. Because that's not a stage of a company. That's right. that's where the company should have been when the orders were placed. Right. How does and I, I don't know this at all. How does how do other incredibly micro brands do this? I don't think they have that kind of they don't, I don't think they do do it. Mm. Who's got this kind of success? Mm. Philippe Dufour? Well that's what I looked up. I was like, how many watches does he do a year? How many? They said like nine to ten. Nine to ten. There you go. But I think yeah, well, what is that? Is it someone's like, hey, if his watch is $100,000, $300,000. Right, it's also a lot more money. I will, give you, I will give you $200,000 right now. I'll yeah. give you the other half yeah. upon completion. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, Okay. I think Flip 4 is doing well. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. So so at least when life is hard, at least you can kind of rest back and say, well, at least it's worth it. Let me smoke my pipe and <laughs> yeah. kind of be a little bit rich. I mean, not not to say that he's rich, but I think he's probably doing well. I will know? say, yeah, like, I don't know how he does it. I mean, he personally wears a datagraph. Yeah. And he's got uh, like a lot of, you know, he's doing well. I think Philippe Dufour is, he's making bank. I could also see there's a, there's a and patron, rightfully so. patron of Philippe Dufour who is like doing something. I don't know any of the finances there, but I can yeah. see it being like other ways are coming in as well. And it's rightfully so. That's how I feel. I mean, you know, if you're falling into just this anomaly uh, level of attention and success and talent and, you know, you're keeping a craft alive. I think you ought to reap the benefits financially, um, but um, I know that that's tricky because that's a very, that's a very Western way of thinking too. I mean, where you need to be rewarded with money, uh, whereas I don't know. I mean, a lot of the uh, Japanese folks that I've spoken to about watches, and never anyone here, but particularly with Grand Seiko, is that their love is far more for the craft and for the self confidence and self reward and achievement and not bringing shame and like that's really more their thing. The micro artist studio, Which I is, feel like. Bizarre. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the micro artist studio. I'm like, yeah, no, me too. I love the fucking pride of it. But you, why you? <laughs> your car, what do you you're drive? Actively <laughs> revving your car. I, I the micro artist studio is a great example. I, I again, not even to dive into financials, but they just do that to keep basically that talent on hand right. Right, that exists, or else right. it will not exist. Right. So that's an interesting thing where it's like. I don't really think the micro studio was raking in money, right? But I do think it keeps something very important alive. Yes, but but it's also you also very, have Seiko behind you. Thank you. <laughs> it's very easy to be doing you have a something ten foot for the giant behind you when your daddy's a billionaire, right? Yeah, like right. it's very easy to be to be doing the right thing and doing it forever and blah 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 blah. When you know that there's never going to be a day that uh, that you're going to have trouble. Right? Yeah, right. I mean, right. that's it. I mean, the, whoever's running the micro artist studio is not counting money or anything like right. that. They're just being right. like, okay, you guys have this much money. Right. A friend, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a friend of mine always says, you know, when someone, when, when, when you ask what someone does and, and they're young, particularly when they're young, because yeah. the only people that say this is young people, you know, let's say 25 to 40, uh, and they say, what do you do? Or 45, what do you do? I'm, I'm an investor. So that means that you took your father's one hundred million dollars and you turned it into a hundred and five million dollars, right? Or and then he, then he'll correct you and say, no, it's one hundred and thirty, yeah. and you're like, and the uh, point remains, yeah, you right. took your father's one hundred, you know. So it's it, not to say that my, not not to say that that I mean it's it, it's a good comparison. It's slightly different because you know with with the micro artist studio, these are people that really are in love with the craft and they're not doing it for success and they're not doing it. The, the people that work there, people that run that company or that run that studio are not. doing Doing it to get rich. It's the job of a lifetime for them. It's They're like, so proud. Yes. They've right. reached the peak of, of their craft. You are allowed to, with a tiny brush, or not allowed to, you are able to, you know, delicately write something on yes. a dial. Like you, at the top of your craft, you are there. We yes. support you. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So it's a totally different, you know, uh, uh, world, obviously. On pricing. Yeah. $23,000. These watches 12 years from now. Yep. Okay, the ones, the people that are making commitments 12 years down the road, are they also making commitments at $23,000? Or is Kikuchi Nakagawa, you know, saying, well, there are incremental price increases year over year, because that's how business works. Of course. <laughs> Everyone does that. 12 years. If, if any brand didn't raise their price after 12 years, I'd be like, how, how crazy are your margins? How are you? Right, exactly. Yeah. So, mm. so I wonder, it's not, I have no position on this. I would hope that they were raising the prices. I hope that, you know, listen, you have a commitment for 20, you know, 20 and 8, and uh, the price is not 23. The price, you know, there's, there's just a, I mean, 3% some... this year, 4% this year, or whatever. I mean, I mean, even if they're the nicest people in the world, supply costs go up in general. Right. Your movement costs more. Right. Oh, it's not about making more money. It's That's about what I'm keeping saying. Yeah. up with the world. You have I mean, to keep up. You have to charge more so your business can stay, but you also have to charge more because your materials and skill and labor and everything is also increasing. So even if you're like, we don't want to raise prices, 
that means you are effectively losing even more as time goes on. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't even think of so that. So I wonder what I wonder what that is. That's a, it's just a question. Yeah. And then second or, or next, out of the 100 watches over the next eight years, and I think that it's now more than ever, you know, because of the popularity. Sure. When do you think they're going to hit the aftermarket? And at what price? Oh, are there any on the aftermarket right no. now? There's none. Oh, I don't know, 100 people, someone's going to test the water. Plus, the reward is so much greater now, right? I mean, three years ago, four years ago, you bought it for 23. There's a six-month wait, yeah, eight-month wait. Months. Some guy's going to be like, yeah, I don't know, sure, I'll give you, I'll give you what you paid. Because yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to add wait. a few thousand. Yeah, right. Now it, you're basically selling twelve years. You're selling someone immediate gratification and closed orders. It's not like you could be like, "Well, I'm patient. I'll wait." It's like, no, you can't even place an order right, right. now. Right, right. So now, what's the value? What is what, what is the ticket to be the cool guy worth? Wow. Because you know what I was five thousand, hundred thousand. This is one of the brands I, li- I like. The micro brands. The, the one guy that flips is going to make more than Kikuchi Nakagawa <laughs> makes in two years. The Someone one like, American I, banker. Ed Sheeran would be like, "I'll give you a million for that." And all, right, cool. all right, cool. I'm out. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Wow. That is a very. You're in quite a predicament, my friend. You're in quite a bit of pickle. Oh, wow. It's a pickled cucumber. <laughs> it's a pickled cucumber for you, isn't it? Because I looked at this watch, scrolled down, and I, I really like micro brands that are doing one thing exceedingly well, like Trilo. Mm-hmm. I looked at those watches initially. I was like, mm, forty to fifty thousand. That's, that's what I'm assuming. Twenty grand. So, whoa, yeah, that's cool. You did nice. you did one thing really well. Yep. And everything else, not that everything was off the shelf, but everything else you still kept high quality. But that's not what you're charging for. I really like that philosophy, and I like this philosophy. But it does get to the point where, like, when I see twenty three thousand, and I'm even like. I could swing it if I really wanted to. Yep. That means everybody thinks the same thing because exactly. I'm not at the top of the watch game. World. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Isn't that wild? So this is a this is just a wild uh, example of just a micro brand success. This is just totally. Uh, I don't know if it's unprecedented, but I mean it's, it's essentially unprecedented. It's an interesting. I feel like the pricing. When we first talked about it, I said that's so expensive for a for a ninety six like copy. Yeah. And then like after and at the time you were like, No, it's not though. Like yeah. look at how much better this is and that. Right. Completely lost on me. Right. Over time, and it wasn't Ed Sheeran and John Mayer, they just made me look at it again. They didn't convince me. Well, I guess maybe they did. But I was like, Oh, that's actually not that bad. Now that I think about it and like yeah. take a second and stuff like that, that's not a bad price. But is this a lesson in I I was gonna say pricing, but no, because at the time when there's not a lot of demand, it's priced appropriately. Right. But you can't all of a sudden, like they could have effectively said, watch is $40,000. Like we're getting slammed with orders. If you want one, there's a wait time, but it's double the price now. They, they still would have sold a ton. Yeah. Okay. But I think that they, that again, they, that would have gone against my yeah, very totally facile yeah. understanding of Japanese honor. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that they would have then had to kill themselves. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way. God. You know, yeah, um, yeah. So that's it. Well, Kikuchi what, what, Nakagawa. What if this is your business? This just happened to you. You are a lone watchmaker. You expect to sell eight watches a year, maybe. All of a sudden, one day, uh, over the span of a week, you get 150 orders. What do you do? Um, uh, <laughs> I close my laptop, yeah. take those deposits, and hit the road. <laughs> Um, I call Marco and say, we're done. (laughs) Um, uh, You know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I'd immediately start sweating and panic. uh, Yeah. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I guess the first the first thing the first thing you do is, after you take a deep breath, you say to yourself, "Okay, practically speaking, I of course wasn't prepared for that. Practically speaking, uh, what can I manage? What's the timeline? Sure. And how do I communicate that to my clients and manage expectations immediately, and then go from there?" And what do you, you know? do if, as you're managing this, you're looking at the clients and everything, you're still order, 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 like as you're trying to figure, you're like, okay, 12 years, I could do that, like that's a long time, I don't know. And then you're still, after you thought about you know, that, you've got another year of I, You know, uh, it's a cultural difference, right? I would keep taking the orders because I would immediately would scale? think to myself, yeah, I would scale a little bit at least. I'd say, okay, how do I get three or four more guys? How do I look? I got to train people. How do I spend $200,000 training, you know, folks, uh, on how to do this? 
Yeah. You know, or a hundred thousand dollars. I don't know. The watches are pretty inexpensive, so it's kind of hard. You know. Yeah. Um, how do I? I need to invest some money in, tra- in training so that I can meet these orders. And there you go. And I, then I finally I did it. I, I won. I won. Final question: Do you? Whereas if if it's if it's if I'm if I'm the kind of person that says no, I need to hand make this, then it's like, well, now am I committing to the next twenty five years of my life to making the same watch? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I can commit someone else's time because they're doing it for, you know, they're doing it. Yeah, right. You know, but I can't commit my time. I don't know what I'm doing 25 years. And I may be, and then honestly, I may be a, I may have arthritis. I may be a sick old man. I tell the one, I mean, I'm not going to be 25 years. I don't have, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I will. I don't know. I'm, I'm 28 now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Everybody's like, Michael, how's Christian doing? And you're, you're like hobbling across the street. I'm like. I don't know, man. It's like no. He dude, really aged. He really just took fifty hard, hard, <laughs> hard, hard. <laughs> Tito's still alive, one hundred and eighty years old. Christian's hard. Christian's hard. Final question. Yes. This brand has all this hype and everything. You again? Where do you cap it? Is it you can get one with no weight because twenty three thousand? Because it's it's this niche thing. It's not the highest level of watchmaking yeah. altogether. Or do you cap it like I want two years? I want five years. I mean, I would things. immediately raise the price. Obviously, I wouldn't raise yeah, it to forty thousand, yeah. but I would raise it to. I'd probably raise it to thirty thousand um, dollars, and and I would and I would issue a letter. And I you know and I, and, I, and anyone that I you know, everyone that I raised, everyone that paid the new price. Would one see this before I raised it, of and I would issue a well, an executive write letter? Uh, why? Um, yep. This is not to make more money. This is because I need to now. You know, I know over the next five years, I need to train three people in this highly technical art. But and I'll explain the art. But this and this is why you love us, sure. and this is why it's going to be expensive for me to do this. Um, but I'm committed to to making this happen, and I'm committed to keeping the art of black polishing alive. And um, and and I appreciate your support. Uh, and um, and that's it. I mean, you know, uh, yeah. period. I think if I place this order, oh, it's a non-refundable deposit, so I'd be locked in. If I place this order and I got that email, I'd be upset, but I'd also be like, okay, that makes sense. Like, yeah. like there's a 12-year, it's not like you're lying. There's a 12-year yeah. wait time and you close orders. Like, I understand there's something going on. Yeah. Like, you can't sustain. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, the whole thing is the whole thing is weird. I mean, then of course you know you'll be kind of sleeping, setting up at night, wondering to yourself, okay, I have all these deposits, these ten thousand three hundred fifty dollars deposits, and there's people behind them, right? And I wonder if in ten years I'm going to get my other ten thousand, you know, ten thousand dollars. I wonder if that's going to happen. Oh I don't my know. You don't God. know. That. You don't know. There's no guarantee. Because and you have no guarantee in ten years that let's say let's say out of the hundred, let's say twenty people back out, right? Two hundred thousand dollars. Really, it's a hundred uh, orders. That's yeah. a tiny well, fraction. That's twenty percent. It's not two hundred thousand dollars. Twenty. Yeah, two hundred thousand dollars. I'm just saying that's yeah. that's a, that's a big part of the business too. Two hundred thousand dollars that you were counting on is now gone. Um, do you have new buyers to take these watches? I don't know. Or is the, all the hype gone? Is all the hype gone? I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, because you're talking years down the line. Talking ten years. Think about that. Line. Someone doesn't pay their. their it happens. I mean, ten. Do people want to walk away from ten thousand dollars? No. You know, people don't want to. Did someone in 12 years die? People, Did someone in 12 years just be like, forget it? Um, yeah, it's fine. If I it extended care. to 15 years, it's if someone fine. said, I don't, like, I, don't have the 10, I don't have the extra 10,000, is it? I'm not going to pay you, so just forget it. it. Like, it's, it's been it. 15 years, forget it. We're good. Whoa. You know, so it's interesting. It's really tough. They're in a weird spot. Yeah. But I guess it's a, I mean, I guess it's a, I mean, I guess it's a nice spot to be in. I don't know. When I do pre-orders for the snail, I sweat. I yeah. think about it all day, every day. Yeah. Because it's just, there's so many people behind, a hundred people. You're like, ugh. Like I one owe you something even, now. I yeah, know you right. paid me, but I'm I on the line. you a thing. Right. I have to get yeah. it done. Yeah. Ooh. That's a scary thing. That's a two-month idea that stresses me out. I can imagine 12 years. I'll be the f- do you know 40? about 12 years? I don't know about 12 years. I'm 40. Oh, my God. You know fat I'm going to be 12 years from now? <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to hold the tools. <laughs> The only thing that keeps me thin is my sport jacket collection, I swear. <laughs> that's a that's good the only, that's a good quote on a t-shirt. Yeah. That's it. All right. You, you heard it here first, folks. That's how the cookie crumbles. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please like it, subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like more content from Neil and Harris, go ahead and uh, follow us on The Zero. Join our community. I can't possibly answer all the comments down below, but I can be there for you on The Zero. Looking forward to seeing you on over there.
straps, um, as many of you should know, bring a whole world of potential to mix up your watch collection. They breathe new life into watches. They help you pull out different colors. They, they give them new personality. Straps can be uh, very addictive. I know people with two watches and 10 straps because it adds so many facets to a collection in a, in a fairly you know, easy and fun way. So that's why they become such a part of the Theo and Harris you know, culture and identity. I think we sell more exotic straps than, than almost anybody because I just love them so much and I love sharing them with you.